and welcome everybody. This is the first episode of the Corner Pub. I talked to Sean about this a few weeks ago, and uh, I wanted to have this like this kind of format where we could just hang out and have a beer like we're at a bar. You yeah. know, uh, well, let's see how this one goes. <laughs> um, so, um, Sean, looks like you already have your beer poured. What do you got there? So I have a cuvee of. I just did. Um, I don't have the other cans upstairs. Uh, Hop Fly and Forgotten Roads Brewing all together. Um, and I did a blend and I did a side by side review and I gave Carrie the rest. Um, the blend's good. Okay. So, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll leave it at that. I don't want to spoil it. Right, Kyle, what do you got there? I think we found the blendings are the best for the all together. It's like when you pour uh-huh. them all together. They're yeah, the best. I said that in the video too. I was like, it, it's interesting. Yeah. We're such dorks. Um, actually, so I thought it was appropriate because you sent this to me and I've reviewed it before. So I wasn't sure if I was going to review it again or not. So it seemed like the perfect time. Where am I going? Yeah. Night and day. Nice. Yeah. So um, it literally just poured. It took a little sip before we started. Uh, Night and day Imperial Stout with cold brewed coffee, 12.7% ABV because Sean's trying to kill me. So yep. big. Big bottle, big ABV. Um, mm-hmm. I, I loved it the first time I had it. I remember um, I had PM Dawn, and uh, I think you and I, I think a couple other people were like, "If you think PM Dawn yeah. is your best coffee style, wait till you try this guy." And it's just like that's like the perfect coffee style. Like okay, and then it's like eh, it's it's a contender at the very least. Yeah, yeah. I yeah, kind of drink. Sorry, oh, yeah, sorry, yeah, yeah. No, let's just have Mike go because I, I because I don't want to turn this into like a giant night and day conversation with coffee and Mike. And this is Mike's thing, and I'm like, let's talk about coffee beers. <laughs> it's not Mike's thing. This is our thing. I know. I know. I, I, I wanted know. all of us to be part of this. This is deliberate. I know. Go. Uh, so yeah, I'm drinking um, kind of an older beer. This is I know what few, it is. this is like like six months old. This is triple seesaw, American Ghost Ale with uh, pineapple, coconut, and key lime. It's an island inspired. It's uh, Trillium in their Seesaw series. It's um, really fucking good. What's the ABV <laughs> on that one? Six uh, percent. So I still can't understand. Like it's just more fruit, right? Like regular double Seesaw, Seesaw, triple Seesaw. There's no. It's, it's not an ABV difference, right? I haven't been able I mean, to wrap my head around how they. I think it's just fruit. I'm not really sure because it's not like it's overly fruited. It tastes right. like a like a it tastes like a sour beer, man. Yeah. Like it. it the the pineapple coconut and key lime they come through i guess like but it 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 tastes almost like like a bolder lime goes yeah you know because you you are getting other things but lime is kind of the predominant flavor but it's not a high abv it doesn't taste particularly over fruited so i don't know i just know it's yummy so (laughs) nice 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 so um you guys were talking about coffee beer yeah <laughs> no I, I was gonna say i sort of wish they would just put night and day in cans just because of format wise like because yeah. for me to open a bottle of night and day it's gonna be uh it's gonna be a commitment like it's 12.7 yeah. percent. like i have another bottle and i was like but if i open it it's gonna be i'm gonna have to drink it all day carrie's definitely not gonna have any of it um yeah. so yeah. seems like she has good sense yeah because <laughs> at least with well, with pm don being nine percent you can at least open a can and you're done yeah and it's yeah it's more format yeah my wife also hates coffee so yeah it's just me so again just we're doing this relatively early in the day um i also am going to make well i guess it's technically cottage pie i wanted to make a shepherd's pie but i couldn't find any ground lamb but um i wanted a couple tablespoons of a stout to put into the ground mix with the worcestershire sauce and all that so i was like oh this is perfect i can you know uh, I, I think the recipe I'm going to kind of follow would be just like a couple of tablespoons is all, but yeah. I think that coffee roastiness will be nice with the working with the Worcestershire and the meat. And yeah, so yeah, definitely kind of a couple purposes for me drinking this right now. So wait, a cottage pie is ground beef? Cottage pie is, so shepherd's pie and cottage pie is the same thing, except lamb for shepherds, beef for cottage. Oh yeah, like we can read that. <laughs> no, no, I'm saying that, that I'm already looking this up. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because, yeah, because Carrie loves shepherd's pie and I'm like the worst like Irish person ever. I, I hate shepherd's pie. Uh, <laughs> but whenever I see, I, I sometimes like, and she's made it and I've seen it in restaurants where they call it shepherd's pie, but it has beef in it. Yeah. I mean, if you want to get technical, yeah. it's pie. 
Interesting. And don't worry about sh- shepherd's pie is English, not Irish. You're good. Is it? Yes. No. Oh, well, then I guess I'm fine. <laughs> yeah. It says here that the term cottage pie was used uh, by 1791 when potatoes being introduced as an edible crop, affordable for the poor. Um, the term shepherd's pie did not appear until 1854. It was initially used synonymously with cottage pie. So it's the exact same thing, regardless of whether the meat was beef or mutton. Mm. Um, mm. However, since 20th century, the term shepherd's pie is more commonly used uh, when the meat is lamb, but it's not it's not a requirement. Nice. Um, <laughs> weirdly, Sean might uh, know this. Oh, I thought you were going to say I was right. <laughs> I was no, sorry, you might know this. Do, do you ever heard it, have you ever heard it called something else in this area? Maybe if you say it, but no, because Chinese pie. No, it's a thing. What? It's it's the exact same thing. It's called Chinese pie. I'm I'm not even joking. Look it Why? up. Because um because of the um in Quebec it's called uh, pate chinois, which is Chinese pie. It's made with ground beef. It, it basically, um, it had to do with um, I think. I think it was learned by Chinese railroad workers or something and brought up hmm. to Quebec or something. it had something to do with, with that, but it's people around here call it Chinese pie huh. no, all I've the time. I've never heard that. Probably because I try to stay as far away as possible. Of it, so. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder, Mike, did you and I have this conversation, have this conversation or cause I, I had made one and I, I posted like pictures on my Facebook, I don't know, a month or two ago. So we had conversation, not you and I necessarily there, but people had conversations. I've had this conversation recently is my point. I just can't remember if it was you or me or someone else. Maybe. I, I don't remember. I, yeah. it's entirely possible. Yeah. I, I just, let me just read this real quick. It says, um, it, it's not a Chinese recipe. It may simply be an adaptation of shepherd's pie. But one possible explanation for the Chinese reference is that it was introduced to Canadian railway workers by Chinese cooks during the building of the North American railroads in the 19th century. The cooks made it under instruction from the railway bosses of British origin as an easily prepared, inexpensive version of the popular cottage pie with um, the sauce of a tinned cream corn substituting substituting uh, for gravy. Hmm. The so. more you know about cottage pie. <laughs> and, and now everyone is like, wow, this was the first episode of Nerd Sense Corner Pub. They're talking about the difference between Shepherd's Pie and Cottage Pie. Great. I can't wait till episode two. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've made some pretty good uh, Shepherd's Pie at yeah. pubs before. So no, you're right. right. Yeah, no. And this is this is stuff we would talk about. And this if we were at a pub, we might be talking about food we're going to eat. Like, we're going to order at the bars. I think talking about food's appropriate. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> Maybe one episode we could actually eat on this. There we go. We could it up a little bit <laughs> um, one thing one thing that's um tough like right now is you know one of the things that you know that i used to do with sean uh, you know he went every weekend but i would go you know, a couple times a season i'd meet up with him to watch football hmm. at uh at a, the bar down the street from us broken, at yeah. the time uh and i mean fucking sports are gone <laughs> <laughs> You know, I watched golf the other day. <laughs> yeah. Jesus. Like, that's how much I guess I miss sports, and I didn't realize I missed them that much. The only thing around, I think, right now is uh, UFC and racing, the NASCAR, yeah, wrestling. Sure. Well, that's, oh, sports yeah, they, enter- I, that's sports entertainment. I guess it's a little bit different, I, it, but still. What we would call live yeah. performance, it works for yeah. me. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a weird thing because. Like, uh, I, I know we, we joked earlier, oh, sports ball, oh, yeah. manly, it, but it's such a ubiquitous part of life and it's fucking gone. Yeah. I, I mean, I know people that like it was all year. It was, you know, um, baseball, football, hockey, yep. basketball, everything. And then when that wasn't on, fuck it, tennis. If that's not on, fuck it, <laughs> golf. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like. And I, I know every you know every now and then with the World Cups every couple of years, right? Yeah. It's not it's not every uh, every four years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I work with a bunch of uh, people from, that are like South American, and they're all about soccer. And and when that comes up, it's a, such a big deal. Like, there's no one talking about sports at all. It's weird. Yeah. You know. The biggest thing was, was that golf match. Right? How big that was. That it was, was some. Yeah, that was huge. <laughs> <laughs> I missed that. What did he say? The the uh, NFL draft. Oh yeah, like, yeah. That everyone was, weird. was watching that. Yeah, like everyone was like really big into that, and that was like gigantic. 
Like ESPN2, yeah. like a couple weeks ago, I was looking at the channels. I think I, I, I forget if I sent it to both chats or just the one with Reed. Um, they're pl- showing video game basketball. Like they're playing <laughs> NBA 2K, whatever. And I was like, what the, what is on ESPN2? <laughs> like, <laughs> that's so <no> chill. <laughs> That's funny. I was telling, uh, actually, when he brought that up, I was, uh, I sent the, the chat. I remember uh, during one Super Bowl, I, I, I imagine the Super Bowl had it been, oh, I was yeah. underway. I was in the Navy. I was underway. And like everyone was like fiending in this weird, creepy way. And um, like the, the, the chief cook kind of had a, a nice meal prepared for that day. And the, um, Somebody set up an Xbox or some Xbox 360, something, Xbox, whatever system it was, or a PlayStation, and put on the latest Madden game and put the two teams that are playing the Super Bowl against each other, computer versus computer, and played it on the, the, the TV screen in Cruise Mess while we ate so we can watch football while we ate our dinner. <laughs> that's, that's amazing. <laughs> that's fucking weird. But, <laughs> but it, it sort of got like, kind of like uh you kind of got into it after a while it's like ah oh, fuck like you, you start getting into this fake game it, it was fucking weird being underway on a submarine is fucking weird i can't even life imagine. turns strange but but i mean that was the only time that happened it, there were similar things like that that happened a few times so it's just you know people just try to i mean i guess it's sort of like now people just trying to grasp something normal mm-hmm. You know, I was, just, I was just gonna say some sense of normalcy, and then also a healthy distraction. Just like, yeah, we're, uh, yeah. you know, in a submarine, we're trapped in our house, whatever. You know, it's like, what, what's a, you know, there's definitely plenty of unhealthy ways to deal with it, and then there's, you know, some some healthy distractors, and that's fine. You know, speaking of unhealthy distractors, this is quite good. Yeah. <laughs> Are you getting a uh, green pepper or anything? Because that's relatively old, not old, but like. Because remember, those are the bottles that I forgot I had. And then I was like, oh, yeah, I have like 5,000 of them. I didn't do like proper aroma or anything. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know about the smell. But you, you get a little bit of taste. Yeah. But it's really roasty. It's got a nice syrup. It's almost like a a coffee liqueur syrup, mm-hmm. if that was a thing. Yeah. And it's got this nice roast to it, some half. Um, I had a beer recently. I forget which one where I kind of was thinking and wanting it to be a little bit closer to a syrup. And it wasn't. So this is kind of hitting that sweet spot of what i wanted the other day oh it was that single cut i did on my birthday oh right right uh, right yeah yeah the um uh, barrel aged stout with vanilla cacao nibs and honey but um but anyway yeah this is this is quite good nice. and yeah just a little bit of that pepper yeah um actually not, I, I don't want to talk about my birthday but um i got a gift card for my birthday and one of the things i ordered and i wasn't sure if you guys ever read it was um you know i'd seen that uh, i forget who put it up like this list of like best comic books right now and it was the idw teenage mutant, teenage mutant ninja turtles series like the original one right not it's it's got i think it's eastman and then a couple other writers so like he's helping but it's like the i think it might be the current run where they added a fifth member oh, okay yeah it's like i think it's the current run of that but but Eastman, I think it's yeah yeah it would, it would be Eastman is involved with it. But anyway, I I haven't gotten it yet. But I ordered the first uh, like compendiums, whatever they are, the yeah, first volume. Nice. So have you guys ever read them? Or, or actually, I've never read any Ninja Turtles. No, I've been wanting to. I watched um, what was yeah the the toys that made was the toys that made yeah. us that just did the turtles. Oh, on the so season? amazing! Yeah, so amazing! And it made me want to go back and get like a collected edition of all the like early comics, just because like it seems like it's such a. And, 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 and the turtles have been such like a big part of my life. Like I grew up on the cartoon, right? Like all the figures, like the movie and stuff like that. Like it's something that I should know the source material, but I really have no clue. I'm pretty sure a few years ago, I saw like a hardcover found version of, you know, it was like collected maybe the first, I don't know, 10 issues or some, something. And it was like a big hardcover. And I wish I bought it now. I think about it all the time, um, especially because uh, in, in my own weird way, I've, getting sort of back in the turtles I, I don't watch anything I, I but i watched the movie recently i guess and um i read about it every now and then it in the way that i don't get into anything really and if, so if i have a random thought every, every few weeks i'm like oh i'm into that now it's sort of <laughs> it's sort of like that I, I keep thinking about uh about that I, I do have a weirdness in that um 
I wonder how it'll affect the way I think about the turtles because I don't, I don't, all I know is really from the, the 87, I believe television show and the movies, right. I never followed any other versions of television since the, that initial 10 season run. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't think I, I don't think I probably watched most of that either, but I know Nickelodeon, I think they own the, the yeah, property now must. for television, but yeah. I never watched any of that stuff. Um, I, I did watch the two new movies. They were not good. But the what TMNT? No, the, oh, that was in two thousand six. I saw that, of course. Oh, it was yeah. actually pretty good. I yeah, thought. no, I, I actually like that one a lot. Oh, oh, you mean the 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 new new ones like the like with Megan Fox? Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Those were not very good. Um, but a TMNT though was really good. Yeah, I saw right. that in theaters. Yeah. Um, weirdly though, it has Chris Evans as a uh, he's I think Casey Jones. Oh, right. Really? Yeah, he does the voice case Jones. Um, I know um, Mako, the um, the Japanese actor. Uh, he was Splinter. I believe Jean Luc Picard was maybe the main villain. I believe. Shit. Um, yeah, I, I saw Sarah Michelle Gellar was April. Oh, I remember that. Yeah, of course. Yeah, that's that's why I want to go see the movie. Yeah, pretty much. I want to go see her animated. No big deal. Because <laughs> her voice is enough. Um, yeah. Chris Evans must have played the most comic book characters. He, I believe so. Didn't you send he, that the other day to the group chat? Oh, uh, I, it was an article. Was it? Was the article he's done the most, or just that yeah, he had done? He's number? done like the he's done some crazy number, and like the last two, or or one of them was he played Loki technically. Technically, he did in That's the MCU. True. So that so that like they true. added that one. Yeah, that is. To, I didn't think of that. Yeah. That is true. technicality, but it works. I mean, but it's yeah, technically it's, true. I'll allow it. it is. Yeah, no, I mean, it, it is true. I didn't think of it. That's interesting. Because yeah. he's done yeah, like he, Scott Pilgrim, he, Fantastic Four. Snowpiercer. Four. Oh, yeah, Snowpiercer. Fantastic Four. Comic. Yeah, Snowpiercer. Yeah. Uh, technically, I think, um, what was it, it The Losers? He did The yeah. Losers. Yep, yep, that's a comic. Yep. That was actually a pretty good, that was a very fun, like, was was there a Losers too? No. I wish I, I liked that movie about, a lot. Yeah, no, I really loved it. Like it was just very like it wasn't anything like super intelligent. It was just very like popcorn cookie cutter, but like very I I, I really enjoyed it. Uh, Jeffrey Dean Morgan's another one that's done kind of more than you think because he did w- Walking Dead. Yep. He, yep. he was uh, Thomas Wayne. Yep. He did. Um, he was the comedian. Yep. He did the Losers. Yep. Uh, he was in more like oh, Jesus Christ. How this man's man is in a bunch of funny book movies. You know? <laughs> But he was in that like Rampage movie. Not that that was a comic book, but like, yeah, oh, he's. I didn't see that. Oh, wasn't Ram- he Rampage? I haven't seen Rampage. You mean the one with the Rock? Yeah. Yeah, no, I haven't sure. seen that yet. It's it, it's definitely on my list of like I I love Rock movies. Like I don't like Dwayne Johnson movies. Is fun. They do what they do, you know. Just and he shut your brain off and just. Yeah, I can't help but like him, and yeah. um, you know, I, although I haven't seen the Jumanji movies, they I, are. I, so good like i've heard a lot of people say they're good recommend them to me i just haven't yeah i'm not opposed to i just haven't yeah yet. like we were gonna <laughs> like we chose to watch it with with my daughter we we're like oh let's see if she'll get through a live action movie and like after movie, carrie and i were like that and and, 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 and and kaylee loved it too but carrie and i were like holy crap that was it was hilarious like it's it was it's extremely well done and and the second one's great too uh it's it's i'm, I'm really surprised that like usually when you get like soft reboot type things like that it's going to be kind of shitty but it, it's it's extremely well done i really really enjoy both i honestly don't think i've seen a rock movie other than the mummy damn they're really fun yeah they're not um how do you know you just said you haven't seen any you don't know <laughs> you just said they're not what do you mean here's the point where we get into a bar fight apparently yeah so <laughs> Maybe that could be a, a segment, like in every episode, is you know you, you bring up a graphic bar fight, and there's a big argument about something that rock movies, <laughs> things that you know something that yeah. doesn't warrant a fight. <laughs> I honestly, I, I I just can't think of a single one. But you said you haven't seen them, so how do you know they're shitty? I just assumed. Um, no, but the, the point was that I haven't seen them. Yeah, that is the point. I I just n- nothing about them really interests me a whole lot. Um, well, yeah. If you're looking for like, like good? really, yeah, well, no, like the production values are great. Like, I think the, I think the last one I watched, well, well, was the latest Jumanji, but before that, it was probably Skyscraper. And that movie is just like a total turn your brain off, 
and just yeah, like it's yeah. action packed, <laughs> like it's crazy. Yeah. And like those Fast and Furious movies, they're not for me, but like they are what they are. But I remember like when he first started making movies, was it Walking Tall? Yeah. First one he did was The Mummy too. And the, okay, yeah. Like, I remember like some of those early movies and be like, yeah, like I, I get him as an action star or whatever. And yeah, I've seen enough of his stuff to be like, yeah, he's. And he, I don't know. Again, I just think he's like a likable person. Yeah. But. Like, like even like just just following him on Instagram and his videos. Yeah, he just seems like a solid, solid human being. Yeah. Yeah. yeah sure. No, I, no, I, I don't have an argument. No, I mean, I get it. Okay, fair enough. Sure. No, I, I, I didn't mean that. I, just, I just saying, yeah, I get it. I just don't. I don't know. He, he, to me, he's almost like, like popcorn. Like it's really forgettable. That's what I said. Is turn your brain off movies. No, I, I, I understand. <laughs> I just popcorn flicks. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I get that. I just don't. Um, it's not that I'm against them. I just don't want to spend money on them. That's fair. That's yeah, fair. No, I, I, I didn't it. spend money on Rampage. Yeah, I get it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right. Ends this week's bar fight. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think the next topic probably that would happen at the bar is we all check our cell phones to see if oh, yeah. our wives expected us to come home or anything. Are we so. good? Uh, <laughs> on, um, on last beer. <laughs> <laughs> four later <laughs> too funny too funny some of some of those um internet memes you see every now and then like you know oh i'm kind of drunk i should have one more beer and go home four <laughs> hours later yeah. some of those memes are really out of control have you seen the um you betcha like the youtube channel or they had the facebook yeah. videos where they do there's one that's like um like happy hour and he's like all right i'm not gonna let it happen we're just gonna have one and then it's like shots <laughs> <laughs> he's great i love those videos mike you might have seen one i bet uh, if he if he saw who it was he would know yeah who it was. he he did that one it was like the the uh husbands of target he was like one of the guys yeah. in that video where like all the wives are shopping at target and they just form a group in the target parking lot and hang out every week no that was a bit okay yeah if you didn't see that that was like one of the bigger ones they did that's you probably can't see that yeah no yeah, I, I I assure you, the only stuff I really watch like is like mixed martial arts based. <laughs> or, or what did I watch today? Oh, Final Fantasy Seven. Something about Final Fantasy Seven. Oh, fair enough. I'm actually oh, so, that, that, sorry. Go ahead. That, no, I was just saying that. So I'm on the gamut from like hyper masculine <laughs> to hyper dork. So. <laughs> fair enough. I'm actually shocked. They only have 226,000 subscribers on YouTube. It seems like they would have more, like in the millions. Yeah, I mean, I think he's, I think he's steadily creeping up, and I, you know, it, it goes exponentially faster. I think, too. like, I, I kind of was watching him and some other, you know, internet comedians, and it seems like once that ball gets rolling, yeah. they start ramping up. I realize the the Target episode, all the guys in that, they have their own channels too, because I've seen yeah. some of the other guys on other channels, and I was like, wait a second, is this the same channel? But it's not. They're just doing their own kind of crossovers too, which is really neat. It's cool. Yeah, the one guy actually in that video, um, he just announced he's got a deal. There's a, the home makeover people, uh, Chip and Di- Diana, Joanna. Yeah. I think it's Chip and Joanna. They have like a new network coming out. He's going to have a show on that. It's like uh, you know, oh, it's really? DIY or you know, one of those oh, HGTV or whatever. Is it, is it the one that, that does like the um, – is it the guy that does the uh, – like he had – like wasn't what was the energy drink and he was drinking the energy drink all the time was it the- not trevor wallace not okay. not the monster kyle thing no this is i forget his name i've only watched a couple of his videos or however many handful but anyway yeah just the the you betcha guy i think is really yeah. funny and he oh, has the you betcha is that charlie barons mike would know this guy yeah trevor wallace is super funny that guy's hilarious mike you've definitely seen these videos we definitely sent them to each other oh I sent one and he yeah. was talking about like being from like San Diego or yeah. He just, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And ended up, yeah, it was a really funny yeah. video. Yeah. So you betcha is technically it's like sort of the same, I like the same stuff he sort of does, but it's like more Midwest geared. Is that Charlie Barron's? Charlie Barron's. Uh, no, his name is uh, no, that, that guy also is really funny. And, and, and he, he's in that target video. Charlie Barron's. Unless I'm getting my people mixed up. 
because he's fucking hilarious. Charlie Barron's is in that video, yes. Right? He is oh. part of the troop. I I, I don't know if yeah. it's a troop or what you would call it, but you know what I mean. They, they do their own thing. It's like it's like the Avengers. They do their own thing and they come together sometimes. Or it's like beer too. <laughs> That's a better explanation, Kyle. Come on. Yeah, I guess it's kind of like that's the problem. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, yeah, Mike. If you like some of these guys, it's just they're kind of loosely connected. They do yeah. videos here sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, I saw Charlie Barron do a video with somebody, and it might be the you best you guy. Is it like a heavy guy with the beard? Yeah. Yep. 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 That's okay. Him. Yeah. Um, I, I saw him do one with him, and they were like uh, at like a small town pub. Yes. And, and this yeah. is like, oh, do you want a beer? And he goes around the back of the bar. I got you a beer. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep. That's it. Oh, what's what's Sally doing today? It's, oh, it's hilarious. Oh, it's yeah, so those, those videos are really good. They are. They're really. They are. They're very funny. They just did a, a, a recent crossover, and definitely socially distanced because you could tell that that they all filmed it wherever they lived, and it was just them like pretending that their neighbors all talking to each other. It was. It was. It's hilarious. It's so. Yeah, funny. that was a good one. Yeah, that was really good. One of my favorite ones they did. Uh, oh, it was. They did a Charlie craft beer one too. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the the one I Charlie did I, um, is that I, I think is hilarious is uh he has like a, a Midwest uh, translator. It's, like a, it's a it's a bottle popper and a translator. So like it's like uh, I mean I'm not gonna even try to imitate any of it, but if you have a chance later, watch it. It's it's really really funny. He's done some funny like um, uh, where he'll make mixed drinks. I don't know. Oh yeah. oh yeah, I saw that one. I saw that he one. Really, yeah. yeah, yeah. He's he's done a couple. He's yeah, that guy's he's and I've you know, I've watched some uh interviews with him because he's like a proper comedian as well. So you know it's yep. kind of a character he slips into. Yep. But uh, yeah, super interesting dude, and definitely more views in that than beer tubing, that's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I like it every time he has a chance, oh fuck the bears. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's another and then oh in 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 the episode, um the social distancing one, like where they're all neighbors, you know, when the guy f- from you betcha always opens the bush and he goes, Puh. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, it was either Trevor or the other guy. Um, he was, he, he opened, he opened, he opened, he goes, Puh. and the other guy opens up a, uh, a chorus and he goes, and, and as, as he's saying, Bush goes, Sucks. yes. <laughs> it's so good. It actually made me laugh out loud. Yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, the, Mike, the you betcha guy. Yeah, he always goes because he loves Bush. It's always always Bush, and you know, yeah, she so does the Bush. And then every time he sips at the first sip, he always goes, "Ah, oh, it's so cold." That's always <laughs> it's his so good. It's so, so good. cold. But like they invited him to the brewery and stuff. Like you know, he, Did, it, is there an episode of, of of him at the brewery? Yeah. yeah. Oh shit, I haven't seen like, that. They give him a tour and everything. Yeah, I, I, I don't know if it's it. on the channel or not, or if it's on the main you oh, betcha. I gotta channel. find it. Okay. Like, yeah, yeah, it was, yeah, yeah. Yeah, way way uh, more views on that than uh, anything we're cranking out. <laughs> I do envision like whenever we talk about the the Juice Board Chronicles, Mike, I do think of it as something like that, and then I'll watch like one of their behind the scenes videos, and I'm like, "There's no way I'm gonna fucking <laughs> we're gonna have time to do all this shit." Yeah. What's what's that Canadian show that you got me watching, son? Letter Kenny. I can't remember. Letter Kenny. Letter Kenny. It's so good. Uh, who's the, the heavy fella in that show? <sighs> Trevor something. Uh... Letter Kenny. I have I, I have to catch up on that by the way. I'm like pretty fucking behind. Me too. I've heard of this show, but I haven't watched it it's yet. So oh, I, I, you gotta watch it. Trevor Wilson. K K Trevor Wilson. K Trevor Wilson. So you guys kept mentioning this Trevor or whatever, and yeah. I, I got to thinking about him. And I've seen a couple of his stand up bits, and they're really funny. They're really funny. Uh, he had one about um about Captain Crunch because he's Canadian, and he's you know, uh, but he's talking about how he went to the states and they have, they have other versions of Captain Crunch and um it, it has a long bit about it um but he's talking about they have crunch berries I don't know what tree they're on but apparently they're in short supply because they never made up the fucking Canada. <laughs> <laughs> it's really good. He's, his stuff's really funny, very dry, um, but. I remember that um, bit. Yeah, you sent it to me. I remember that. That was really good. It's good, and he doesn't have that speech impediment he has on the show. Yeah, which is disappointing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, his, his Kyle for his speech impediment. It's sorry. His speech impediment is basically he adds s's to every word. Okay. And so it, you know, like it, it, it's used for comedy continuously in the show. Uh, but, um, 
when he was doing his stand up bits, I throw me out for a second. I'm like, oh, that's different. <laughs> like, I just sort of assumed they had a, like a fat friend that just had a speech impediment and they put him in the show. But he was le- legitimately a talented guy. So, got me good. <laughs> it is weird when you like watch a performance of someone and um, then they'd be like, you hear them talk in real life. You're like, you know, that's what they talk like. Like, um, a lot of like the British guys, if you watch The Walking Dead or whatever, and then Rick talk, you see the guy who plays Rick yeah. in a real interview, and it's just like, wait, you talk like that? Or uh, Henry Cavill, you know, it's like, wait, you're not from yeah. Midwest? Or, or like what? Christian Bale, like, yeah. Yeah. Like the way he gets the character. Yeah. Especially because Christian Bale is a weirdo, and like, he'll do press in his accent yeah. that he uses in the movie sometimes. <laughs> Dude, he's like, comedic. When he, yeah, when he did Batman Begins, like, um, I knew he was Welsh. I remember you saying, "Like, how the fuck are you gonna hire, like a, in a British person or whatever? I don't know if they consider themselves British, but someone from the UK to be in as Batman." I thought he was gonna have an accent and everything. I was so stupid. <laughs> and then I watched the movie. He doesn't have an accent. I was like, all right. And I bought the DVD and all the the uh, bonus footage. He talks with an American accent. Always like, in character. He stayed in character. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I remember some people being upset with uh, Henry Cavill being uh, cast to like, how, how you going to truth justice in the American way? How are you going to hire a non-American actor? I, mean, I do remember people, not a lot of people, but enough people like. Yeah. But I think the issue was basically like Bale was technically still Batman when he was cast and Andrew Garfield had just been cast as Spider-Man as well. Oh, right. So they're like yeah. all, all of these um, American characters yeah. being played by yeah. superior British actors. There you go. There you go. And we have a much larger pool of people to choose from <laughs> for a population point of view. And uh, yeah, that's yeah, okay. <laughs> I, I actually saw something with um what's his name? Uh shit. Uh Sean, it's the guy who plays Avon Barksdale in the wire, whatever his name is. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, um and he was talking about um British actors, he said they're just better. <laughs> like no you know i mean he, he had a long spiel about it he, i mean i think he had he kind of related it to some sort of racism and stuff in the United States, but um but he was talking about um uh idris yeah you know and he's just like yeah he's just a, he, you know these make better actors over there this is how it works you know and and because dominic west was british um idris elba was british the, um, the idris casting story in the wire is so epic it is yep I don't know. I'll, I'll bite that. I don't know. So, that. so um, the creator of the wire said he didn't want anybody that wasn't from, or, or the, I think, or is it just a character? I think it was just a character. He wanted somebody from like Baltimore, nothing from outside. So his agent said basically, yeah, so they're not going to watch you. So he went in there with the full on, he went in with his, with, with an American accent and kind of went through the audition and they loved him. And then something happened where he then, just kind of admitted it, right, Mike? Is that yeah. What it was? Yeah, he admitted yeah, it. Yeah, I think so. And, and like, because he had he had the the the, the creator fooled the entire interview, <laughs> and then finally he was like, "All right, I guess I guess it doesn't yeah. really matter." <laughs> I'm from London. <laughs> <laughs> but that show like definitely got people from Baltimore. I mean, they 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 wanted to be. Yeah. I, I have watched that. Like, I just didn't know his yeah. um, auditioning story. I mean, for authenticity, like, I mean, definitely filled that show with people from Baltimore. I don't know about how many leads were from Baltimore, but definitely wanted people filling out the show who were. Well, like Prop Joe. Prop Joe is definitely from Baltimore. Um, a lot of the a lot of the gang members were, I think, a lot of yeah. the, the drug dealers. Uh, what's uh, Snoop definitely was from. Yeah. Um, from the area, there's a there's a there's a bunch of them, um, I believe um bubbles i think he might be from the area okay i believe i, I mean omar omar no he wasn't he that's no. michael michael k williams no okay. um i don't know where he's from though but it wasn't from baltimore because i remember him talking about um uh like trying to adopt the accent gotcha i just start i just got onto the season of uh i'm rewatching community now it's on netflix it's the season he's a professor on, so it got me thinking actually yeah. about the one recently. So it's kind of funny. I, I wasn't even want to brought it up just now, but it's been in my mind that I would like to rewatch that as well. Uh, he, Michael K. Williams is from Brooklyn. Just, oh, okay. Uh, oh, okay. Okay. Um, 
it, it was interesting because I got in a weird wire kick again sort of recently. I watched a few episodes that I liked here and there and uh, and I was watching a lot of like background stuff on it and like um, like I said, that's how I saw that, that bit with um, the actor who played Avon. Just, it was really, really cool. It was a really interesting interview. Um, and I, I, I saw a, a few things on just uh, the progression of Omar as a character and, and um, Dominic West's character, I forget his name, but his, his story arc and stuff. It was a really interesting thing because I, I watched that show sort of in chunks and mm-hmm. some of the stuff, I forgot how it would, it would have tied together. You know what I mean? Yeah, I was like, "Oh no, shit! Oh no, shit!" It was really <laughs> interesting. It, it really was probably the greatest show of all time. It it's hard so, to. I loved it. When th- there was a time where I only watched comedy, and then Lost came on, and I loved Lost, and that's a whole that could be a whole other thing. Oh, but yeah. so it was like only comedies, and then Wednesdays I'd watch Lost. And I had so many people are like, you got to watch The Wire. You got to watch Mad Men. You got to watch Breaking Bad. And I'm like, they're not comedies. I'm not interested. The world is a harsh enough place. When I'm trying to entertain yeah. myself, I want it to be fun uh, or funny. You know, I mean, it's some comic book stuff, too. But this is before there was, you know, an overabundance on television and movies of comic book stuff. Anyway, so finally I relented. I was like, all right, I'll check out these shows. And sure enough, I'm like hook, line, and sinker. I'm like, yeah, I totally get why you why everyone was telling me the wire is amazing and Mad Men is amazing and Breaking Bad is amazing. Um, but yeah, it, it took a lot of people to finally get me to to try it. Um get that off. Uh, I'm trying to think I'm trying to think what I'm well, I I, I did start rewatching um, community. But I, but I love how Kyle's rewatching stuff, even though he could be watching something new like Buffy or Angel. I just I'm a little. <laughs> and, and then after well after Community, I will watch um, Clone War for the first Clone War, whatever it is. I've been yeah. I've been starting I have been starting that. I actually started Rebels like a couple months ago, and I'm I'm halfway through the first season of Rebels, and it's really good. Clone Wars, mm-hmm. I, I I I keep trying to get into it, and then like I kind of fall out of it. Like I yeah. I do like it. I don't know. I don't think it's the animation that's doing it. I think it's just it's not as tightly like well i guess mandalorian was also not not every episode was like tied together in one big arc so i don't know yeah it's weird actually the thing is with with um mandalorian was my favorite episode was sort of the most standalone of all which was the one on that uh that that uh far off world with they were like in that the bogs and stuff Oh right, where like he fell in love with the woman there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was Bryce Dallas like that, Howard's episode. Yeah, it was the first episode with Gina Carano. That's the one where they like, you know, it's like uh, he tells you know the child that uh, you stay there, walks outside, and then he's slurping fucking yeah. soup and shit. <laughs> oh, that episode. No, I, I was thinking of the other episode um, with when when they were like uh, defending that like small village. Same episode. Is it? I'm pretty sure the same i think so i, thought I was thinking and like she tried to remove his mask the, the yep. woman i thought gina yep. i thought that was gina's like second or third episode i thought it was afterwards pretty sure it's the same episode okay fair enough um, are you guys watching the behind the scenes mandalorian on disney plus i'm up to the, not i'm up to the technical episode which okay. we talked about which is mind-blowing yeah that's <laughs> not yeah i just watched the practical one that was released um so yeah i'm all caught up on that that's episode yeah. five right so i'm, I'm uh, yeah so yeah so yeah i'm just one behind then cool yeah but yeah yeah i'm loving it they're very very well done and it's so funny like like i remember when, when mike was like why do they need to do a documentary series for eight episodes it, it totally makes sense how they're doing it too it's yeah like, no it's, it's not overly again dumb. this is the second time did this i did not say that i said i said okay. i understand why they're doing it they make they, have, <laughs> they can make all these episodes for almost no money okay fair because, enough fair enough fine <laughs> it, it's almost like you know the behind the scenes that you would get on a blu-ray or whatever like it's just it's it's a lot of panel discussions yeah. it's a lot of yeah just behind the scenes yeah. stuff so it's it kind of like i mean the mandalorian is film quality and then they're they basically made the dvd extras and yeah. here's that the series but uh i i'm eating it up i mean oh, the yeah. the uh accountability not accountability well yeah, i guess accountability to like the uh, the originals the spirit of star wars 
um, you know, between the the special effects one and the you know, practical effects one I just watched, just like how to perfectly marry that. So it's yeah. in the spirit of Star Wars. That is one of the cool things about the original trilogy is that that universe feels lived in. You know, that, that object looks real, not computer mm-hmm. rendered, you know, and uh, tr- how to best do that. Yeah, I, I just I think that's such, it's such an awesome series. So I'm, I'm glad they're kind of doing some of the in depth behind the scenes stuff. Yeah, and I, and I love how I I, I, haven't, I don't think they ever said it, but the way they, that that they do like the roundtable discussions, like it's definitely very reminiscent of of Favreau's Dinner for Five. I don't know if you. Oh yeah, Mike I remember that show. Kyle, did, yeah, that was cool. That yeah. was so good. Like I would love them yeah. to just bring that back, like for I don't know one-off episodes here and there or something like that. But I like that's kind of I I got that vibe from that table thing and, and i'm wondering if, if john kind of did thought about doing that doing it that way because of dinner for five but yeah i love it on uh the wwe network there's a show like a like table for three or table whatever it is yeah and as soon as i started watching it i was like this is just like that john Favreau show <laughs> these <laughs> fucking thieves yeah i know I'm like not... um oh sorry go ahead mike sorry no go ahead no, okay i'm gonna grab well, just, like, marvel, back. okay i know marvel has done um some of those round tables like with directors and stuff. And I, I know you haven't seen the Mandalorian one, but like, it is kind of cool having the different directors from the show talking about, you know, what got them into star Wars, how they approached it, what they thought of it. Cause it looks like it was a very collaborative process. You know, like Favreau was there. Sometimes other directors were there if they weren't directing the episode. Um, yeah. It, it was definitely cool to see, but it reminded me, it, it just coincidence I'm wearing a black Panther shirt, but I really like that on, one of the extra features on the for the Black Panther movie is they had a bunch of comic book writers who sat down together who had worked on Black Panther, and that was really cool to hear like their takes and what they thought of the character, the evolution, and uh, yeah, it just it lends it's, it's it, like what we're doing now. You know, you're sitting around talking about something in depth. It just really lends itself to uh, being informative and interesting. Interesting. And then make I, you young explaining it. <laughs> no. I, I I had a uh, I I was up really late watching uh, MMA. Dude, as a teacher, I'm used to people yawning when I'm talking. <laughs> Did you fall asleep? No, no, of course not. Fall asleep, just yawn. Did you love the um, sound clips in the uh, podcast episode, Kyle? With uh, Mike. I Morris? did, yeah. And you know what? If I'm going to be honest with you, um, the um, the uh, well, you're, you're talking about your 500th video, yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. When you did, the, when you played the the clip, yeah, of, of your then girlfriends, like it was hard not to get a little emotional. It's just like, <laughs> oh, that's so cool, and yeah, it was just it was a really nice touch. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I cannot believe people sat through that. <laughs> oh, actually, and, and 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 I did want to ask how how did the clips come through, volume wise, in regards to the podcast? Was it jarring? Was it too low? So, that... I mean, I watched it on YouTube. I don't know if the num- if the stuff would be different. It would have been YouTube. the same mix. Okay, okay. So, yeah, as I listened to it on YouTube, I, I started on my phone when I was, like, uh, making some breakfast and putting dishes away and stuff, and then I finished it on this computer that I'm filming on as I was playing video games. Mm-hmm. And don't did I have to adjust okay, cool. volume or did, did anything seem too soft or too loud? I mean, the, I, I suppose those clips were a little maybe a hair softer than you two guys were talking. Yeah. But it no, works. It works. And actually, and you know what? I think the first time you started playing clips, I was watching it intently on this screen and I was like, oh, it's not syncing up to Mike's mouth. And I'm like, oh, he's playing a clip of Mike talking. <laughs> oh. right so I was like, I was about, I was going to like, oh crap, dude, it's out of sync. And then I really, so that, but I think that's a good indicator for you. Like I thought it was, that was the issue. So I, I think the yeah. touch about the volume was appropriate. Okay, yeah. Cool. Well, that's good. When, uh, just in case you want to, every time I'm doing this, as I'm covering up the fact that I'm yawning. Fair enough. <laughs> Even when we do, we try to do beer reviews. I, I, if I'm yawning, I was to this <laughs> whenever I'm yawning. It's a good time. move. It's a good move. <laughs> I brought the soundboard too, Mike, just in case we ever wanted to. Uh... <laughs> I think in real life, though, I'd probably bring the soundboard to a bar, right? That makes that makes no more sense. Yeah, no, would. you would not bring wow. the soundboard to a fucking bar. I know what I'm doing. The first bar we go to after this, I can walk in with my iPad. Sean and, might do that. The speaker system. I'm just like, bam! Everyone, listen to this. So, 
not to pile on Sean, but I the other day when we were getting ready to do the uh, live stream with Matt and Jeremiah from Hot Butcher for the World, we had that group text going with all of us. And I just kept waiting for the, the text from Sean asking us what glassware we we're all going to use. <laughs> Dude, well, I'm like, I'm like, Jeremiah is going to see how big of a dork Sean is about glassware. I, and then you never, never did. You never sent that text. Like, what, what glass is everyone using? What shape? Because it took a lot of willpower not to do it. I'm not even joking. I thought about it multiple times during the day. I'm like, should we see if we should sing a glass? I'm like, no, no. Here's the question. Here's the question, Sean. How many times did you type it, then delete it before it <laughs> sent? The best part, too, while we were drinking the beer, there were multiple times where, where I was getting ready to like start giving my thoughts. I'm like, Sean, this isn't a fucking beer review. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, I like the idea that we all had the same beer, yeah. but yeah, I'm glad it didn't turn into... Although... In some ways, it would be cool to like drink the beer and talk about the beer very specifically with the brewer or yeah. the brewery owner or whatever. Um, I would like to do something similar. We could call it like say let's let's do because I I have seen a lot of breweries are doing it like Trillium is doing it. They release like a mix pack and and you and it's, you have to get tickets, but I'm sure Jeremiah would just do it if we asked um, like a sensory thing. Like mm -hmm. we'll drink the beer together and he can kind of get walk walk through the process more yeah. of like and then what we were getting or, or, or what they were going for which would be kind of cool to do um but i, I do think, think it's all cool yeah, to do yeah. I, I don't think there's one might be a little cooler than the other or something but i think yeah. it's all in and all cool yeah yeah and i think he had thrown out that idea as one of the possible kind of ways to approach it yeah. you know but i think the conversation it was it was q a but it felt decently like conversation yeah. You know, I think it was good how we did it, but I think there's always room for improvement. There's always different ways to do it, yeah. but yeah, yeah. Because and we and we did talk about talk about the beer a little bit. We didn't really go in depth, like we talked about how it was like dangerous and like it was delicious. And, yeah, you know, it was yeah. super easy. But like, yeah, no, I, it, it it would be fun to get like uh, maybe one or two if it's lower ABV ish beers and like kind of go like through a sensory thing just to kind of get. Yeah. That would, that be, would be pretty. Bad. Yeah. And I think it, it would be cool too if we could. Not that we know a ton of breweries or brewers, but yeah, to do like similar things like get cans, excuse me, or bottles of whatever same beer and then have the person on, whether it's yeah. a brewer or the owner or whatever. I think it would be pretty cool to kind of, I don't know how regularly we could make it, like in terms of making it a series, but I think it would be a cool thing. And kind of like this, and I know, Mike, we're not trying to lean too much into it, but like, just some of the cool stuff that's come out of this distancing and you know we've been doing a lot more live streams and all that and just yeah. kind of coming up with new ideas and um you know what sticks what doesn't you know going forward and uh you know i, I think that was cool having him on and i think it'd be cool to have other people on i think it'd be cool to do something with him again obviously and yeah just it's you know doing the, the beer chug guess the abv you know i mean all these just different kind of things we've done it's it's pretty cool you know it's nice I also I do think that this live streaming thing and um, these online conversations I think they're going to be part of the world now. Yeah, you know I I think it's, it's going to be just part of life, um, not for everybody, but for, like you know for especially for people um, like us who we we do have friends across the country. Yeah, yeah, but it's you not know, like we weren't doing this before. It's, it's no, but it's definitely more oh, happening yeah, more you know, often yeah, now. Yeah. You know. You know, like we didn't do this with, with Kyle all the time, you know? Well, yeah, I guess you're right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that we're was... shooting for once or twice a week at this point yeah. where we're trying to do something, you know? So, yeah. I mean, it's definitely, we weren't doing once a month before, you right. know? Yeah. So, but... and, and, like this, this year, all it did was, was maybe just accelerate the fact that we're going to go in this direction anyway, you yeah. know? You know, we did talk um, a lot of times after we would do our reviews afterwards when we would shoot the, the breeze we're like wow this is great like you know this is something we should be doing anyway why why aren't we doing this yeah you know it's fun and i think and we talked about it a little bit the other day when we did um the all together live stream um I, I you know we do beer content channels but like i do think there is something to be said about getting to know people on a more personal level which is like what why i think something like this works and if you you know, we talked about should this be part of Nerd Sense or not, but like, yeah, people get to know you better this way, which is good, you know, or we were just talking about like watching behind the scenes of shows and watching clips of actors talking and being interviewed, like, because, you know, not everyone, but a lot of people do gravitate towards 
I want to know more about this thing. I, I've seen the thing, you know, teach me about the periphery, you know, like yeah. what, what else is going on. But I, I do think there's a, a advantage to this for sure. When Did was, you want uh, to hear live, not live, but uh, on video, or are we going to do like a poll about if, if these going forward should be live streams or recorded and published? Yeah, I think we're going to ask if they would rather have it. it well, if, if, if they would like audio only too, because if it, because I think I'm definitely going to do video. Yeah. Audio, I, I was talking about earlier. I don't think it's going to be too hard technically to do it because I just would technically just export this as audio yeah. only and then upload it. So that would be easy. But I guess, yeah, let's see if, if, if they want to do the live stream. The one the one downside to that I was thinking is whenever beer, it seems like beer tubers that, that, that do their like, they have like weekly live streams, like not Matt, but I but other ones like they have set dates, but I don't think having a set like all right we're gonna live stream every thursday like that's kind of handcuffing us at that point like yes i wouldn't want to do that no no, no I, agree. I agree with that so i guess yeah it really depends if they want um the live stream because like also if we do live streams like do we work around just like three like this two thirty in the afternoon how many people do do we think we're going to get on a sunday at two thirty in yeah. the afternoon and plus what i don't want this to be is work right yeah Yes, this is this is after work. Yeah. So it could be a mixture, right? It could be we do recordings and then some days if we're like, all right, let's do it on a Friday at six or seven when we know people would want to watch when they normally watch, we'll make it a live stream version of it. Or it we just yeah. la- or we just literally if we if we want if people say they want the live stream, we live stream it every single time. And if they don't we don't get a lot of interaction, there's no real difference, right? Like other than maybe we'll get some comments we can interact with. If not, it's still just this, right? And people are gonna yeah. get the recorded version afterwards. Yeah. Works for me. Yeah. No. And it's like at a real bar, sometimes it's the people you went with, sometimes other people are yeah. having great conversations with you too, you know, and it's all good. Sometimes uh you know, cute bartender comes up to you and just talks your ear off, and then you have to keep telling her you're married and you're not interested, and then she just keeps talking your ear off. And you're like, listen, I, I never happened to me. Like, it's <laughs> never a, happened to me. I love that, you know, Happy handsome to you, but I just, I'm, you know, married man and I'm committed to my wife. So you'll have to just think about me on your own later, I guess. Because is, is your wife standing next to you? No, no, this is for no one's just second, no. <laughs> you, you could hear if she was, you would be able to hear her shaking her head. And just, <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. I, I actually have a little bit of a because this year is, is one an episode and two like hashing things out in a way too. Yeah, which is which um, is fun for, I think it's gonna be fun for people to kind of get a little bit of the of the behind yeah. the scenes of how this works. I was wondering, like, you know, should we put a finite time on it? Like, at at 45 minutes, at 60 minutes, we just, that's just the end of it? Because the way you could do that is set the timer, and the timer goes off, it sounds like a phone call, oh, shit, it's the wife. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, and then at that point, oh, shit, it's the wife. All right, one more beer. (laughs) What? All right, one more round, yeah. And then that's the, and then we have our, our last beer. We finish fifteen minutes later, like whatever. <laughs> yeah, sort of like a, as a warning signal. Let, 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 like right now, we're at fifty three minutes, and and I said in the text before we came out, like let's say forty five, so that when we hit yep. an hour, we know we need to yeah. wrap up. Yeah, I, I would I would call it last call, Mike. Yeah, I, I, would... I like it. Ah, <laughs> oh, come on, it's so, it's so much more fun. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, that, but that works too. No, that works too. It's just like having like sort of like a little gimmick into like yeah. understanding that this, this show's almost over. Yeah, yeah no, I think that's a cool idea. I'm, I'm sorry, Sean. How long have we been doing it for? Uh, Fifty-four minutes. Okay, so as we're wrapping up, any last topic of conversation we should have anything cool in your guys' lives or interesting or anything you're reading or something else we haven't talked about that you're watching or I've been watching upload. How is that? It's, I'm a big Greg Daniels fan. I really like it. Yeah. Um, I'm on the la- second to last episode. I'm halfway through, um, which I'll probably finish this afternoon. And it's, it's, did you ever watch um, The Good Place? Because that's what everyone's comparing it to. Okay. Yeah. I, I've seen all but the last season because yeah. it's not a Netflix show. It's, it's definitely has that, that vibe because you're going to go to an afterlife or whatever, but it's definitely, it, it's, and it's 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 very interesting, and it's 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 ten episodes. Um, that's what I like about about Amazon stuff. It's like not you're not talking about twenty two episode yeah. seasons, and it's just it's I I really enjoy it. If you like 
Greg Daniels, I definitely recommend it. Speaking of Greg Daniels, we started Space Force last night, Carrie and I. How about I haven't started that, but I I haven't heard good things. Yeah, we started it and we want we got how many episodes we watch? Three? Four? Um I like it. I can see why people may not like it. I think they're probably going into it thinking creator of the office or co yeah. or co creator of the office and Steve Carell, and they're expecting the, the office. office. And it's not. It's definitely more it's comedy, but it has yeah. it's a it's a it's a, it's, a, it's a dramedy at the end of the day, I think. Or or maybe a darker not really a dark comedy, but yeah, it's definitely it has a serious tone, but it also has full on like laugh out loud bits. So I'm wondering I, I actually haven't read any of the reviews. I've only seen like the headlines of, of yeah. people kind of shitting on it. Um and and I was like, Yeah, I'm just gonna I just wanna get it. I just wanna watch it because I love I love Steve Carell, I love Greg Daniels, like yeah. I just don't understand how he could do how he, how he show running two shows at the, literally premiered at the same time because they must have been in production at the same time I would imagine. And I know that, that I don't know, but I do know he's had the idea for upload since he worked at Saturday Night Live. So like it's definitely something that's been going on in his brain for decades. Okay. Um, for uh, for Greg Daniels when he was writing actually back like when he used to be writing par partners with Conan O'Brien, which I think shows you how long ago oh, that would wow, have been. Yeah. They. No, they, they, they're still friends. They just kind of took their own paths. But at the time, they were like writing partners. Um, I don't want to not have Mike talk next, but the thing I was going to bring up relates to this. So um, I talked about everything I've been watching, but I'm about to finish the um, oral history of The Office, essentially, is what this book is. Oh, I've seen and that I, you post that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I've been like slowly reading it just because I, I want it to last. But it's like, no, you need to also read it because that's what I do with, so, with that Bill Murray book. I was, I was, I was reading. I, yeah, I but to last to yeah. But that's why I actually I ordered that Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles collection because that way I have something else to look forward to. So like, yeah, finish this book. But anyway, uh, maybe like a week ago, I read the chapter about Steve Carell, and like, you know, they interviewed and a lot of people, like hairdressers. I mean, I'll, I'll, you know, not just people on the show. And, and they were willing to say things like, oh, yeah, some people got egos as their names got more famous. <laughs> they didn't name names, but like they would say that stuff. It was incredible reading the chat about Steve Carell. Like every single person, even people who are willing to admit other people got egos were like, he's the nicest guy. He's the <laughs> nicest. He's professional. He never complained. He had to do some ridiculous stuff for way more takes than it should have you know, taken. Yeah. He, you know, he was the first one on the call sheet. So he's always the first one there. Of course. He was always time to get his hair and makeup done no diva stuff and it was just it was just person after person from every department just saying how amazing steve Carell is that's awesome that's yeah it was really it was refreshing to see yeah it was cool what if it's because he was such a tyrant that they were all afraid and in 20 years <laughs> in 20 okay. years you can say whatever you want now about the guy no I, i've heard the same thing my cousin worked on a movie worked on that john stewart movie that's coming out where he directed it and steve Carell stars in it and he said same thing. He said both John Stewart and Steve Carell were like. The, he said John Stewart's the nicest director he's ever worked with, and Steve Steve Carell is easily one of the nicest actors he's worked with. So nice. That's awesome. It's it's nice when you hear stuff like that because yeah. it's so easy to get this idea in your head of who these people are. Yeah. And then all they do is let you down eventually. Yeah. So it's nice to hear that. I was going to mm -hmm. say, uh, you know, about people running multiple shows. This is the last point I make. Um, is uh, David E. Kelly. This is a weird thing that I know this fact. Yeah, that did Donnie Darko, right? No, I don't know if he did. What did David E. Kelly? Why yeah, why do I know that name? Yeah, same here. Well, he did, he did a lot of television stuff. He uh, he worked on um, a lot of television sh things. Um, the ones he was most famous for were. Oh, Ally McBeal. Uh, right. Uh, yeah, oh, but he he also he also, little, he also little eyes, yeah. Doogie right. Howser. Yeah. Um, yeah. But he did for sure. He did the practice oh, and Ally McBeal at the same time. Who did Donnie? Hold on. Who did Donnie Darko? Why am I thinking David? E Richard Kelly. Sorry. Okay, go on. Sorry, yeah. Go on. Yeah. The, he did Ally McBeal and the practice at the same time for years and wrote almost every single episode. I remember, like, remember he, we had this conversation. Yeah. He didn't write like three episodes of both shows or something like that. Like he wrote every fucking episode. Twenty two. Two. Twenty two. Like that is incredible, incredible I mean, workload. Prolific. That, that I mean, that is, you know, and people people can judge whether the stuff's good or not. But the, the fact is, the shows were really popular at least in in their time. Did you? Oh, yeah. What is so? Now I'm on a Wikipedia rabbit hole. Thanks, Mike. 
the show Allie from 1999. In 1999, at the height of the show's popularity, a half-hour yeah. version entitled Allie began airing in parallel yep. with the main program. This version, designed in a sitcom format, used re-edited scenes from the main program along with previously unseen footage. The intention was to further yep. develop the plots in a comedy. It was focused only... Wow. The yeah, re- they turned the one show into two. Was, was canceled partway through its initial run. Yep. Huh. Can you get those anywhere? Oh, I have no idea. That's you can you used to be able to get that stuff on DVD. That type I don't of know stuff, what you had. I don't know. That type of shit fascinates me. Like I love crossovers, I love spin-offs. Yeah. Like just like the idea of that happening is like I, I need to have it in my life somehow. Yeah. <laughs> You're crazy. I don't know. Even if it's terrible, I don't care. Uh, do you remember when David E. Kelly tried doing the Wonder Woman show? I was just about to say that because I just scrolled through. Uh, Did you ever watch that pilot, Kyle? I've not seen the pilot, no, but I'm familiar with yeah. it, yeah. I think I watched some of it. It was pretty bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I went down a big rabbit hole because I also am like Sean, like the connection stuff. Where it was like, you know, um, R2-D2 and uh, C-3PO are like in the hieroglyphics of Indiana Jones. And then like, there's like... Um, R2-D2 is space to debris in one of the Transformers movies, like just all these oh, connections, yeah. you know, uh, E.T., there's like whatever race E.T. is, is in the prequels of Star Wars, yeah, just all Clone these, like, Wars. Yeah. you know, yeah, yeah I, I get stuff up, yeah, man. I love it. In the very first episode of, uh, of Battlestar, when uh, the, pre- the one, the, the, uh, Roslyn, when Roslyn's finding out she has cancer. Of the miniseries or the episode? The miniseries. Okay. This is, that's the first episode to me. Yeah. yeah. Is uh, she's finding out she has cancer. She looks up in the sky. And you can see uh, a firefly fly by. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yep. I forgot about that. Yep, yep, yep. Cool. I didn't know that. That's really yeah, cool. Yeah. And yeah, that's actually that's what like, I just rewatched, awesome. watched too. I, I, I just rewatched Firefly, and I just finished Serenity, too. So that was what I've recently been into. It's such a good show. Such a good show. Yeah, it's a great show. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. Then why have you watched Buffy and Angel? <laughs> Same fucking people, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> It doesn't speak to me. It doesn't. I think we're at our hour mark, so we should probably get going. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Kyle. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I got to go help my wife. Oh, too, so. yeah. Oh, I got to go mow the lawn. Oh, man. Oh, too funny. Good. Oh. Mike, I think this proved to be a good idea, brother. I think this was pretty obvious that yeah. there's something here, man. I had a good time. And now so you need to I'm, figure I'm out how you going to outro this. I need to get the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. See you guys later.